What we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing, are we okay, Mr. Foreman? I see a red light flashing. We are going to be introducing a new tool to you. The reason why you need tools is because as a computer tech and as a network tech, you are going to have to understand how to deal with quick resolution of connectivity problems. Uh, besides printer, uh, being able to troubleshoot network connectivity problems is your number one issue. Tools like this can help you resolve network connectivity issues very, very quickly. These are not inexpensive. Uh, we'll be talking about how much they cost, and uh, you could buy a relatively nice used car for one of these. Um, so this is not something for you young men who like to lose things. This would not be good to lose. Um, they could be issuing your check at the end of the day and saying, don't come back if you start walking in and saying, well, boss, I lost this when I lost. So let's get started on the network tool. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever used the old tool? This is the old tool that Mr. Florman may have introduced you to, so let's click away. Let's see how many of you may have used uh, one, the older tool. Okay, so about 75% of you have possibly used. 25% were probably lying. They wouldn't lie, Mr. Florman, would they? Okay, so um, let's go. Let's let's move on. This is the uh, this is the way it looks, and we're going to walk through how to how to begin to understand when you hold this in your hand, you hook it up into the network. What is it all going to mean? So this is some of the pieces and parts. We've got LEDs on both sides. We're going to have a display that we're going to learn that that's one of the most important pieces and parts of it. We're going to have a power button. We're going to have navigation. We're also going to have some USB connections and other things. So I want you to get comfortable with what it looks like from the front panel. What is this going to do? Well, first of all, it's going to provide diagnostics. It, is a, it has the ability to measure 10, 100, and gigabit connections. Uh, we just submitted a PO to um, for a, a retrofit of all of our network gear. So we have four network closets, and those network closets are all gonna be upgraded with new Cisco network uh, switches and various other types of equipment. That, that PO ran $98,000. So to replace the electronics in a closet like this, this is a typical 19 inch rack, and this is the kind of rack that we typically hold our switches and routers and various other types of network equipment. We have, we have four rooms with this type of equipment in. That's going to be $98,000. And that's with OCPS's discount. That's with um, some refund of money because of the equipment that we're going to trade up. We're going to trade in dollars, all that. Next very, very important piece that we're going to be using with this tool is we're going to be able to trouble voice over IP. In the upcoming months, uh, Orange County Public Schools is moving very fast to replace the typical telephone with voice over IP telephones. In other words, you'll take your telephone and you'll plug it into the network jack. It will not go into an RJ11, the old POTS, point, uh, a plain old, old telephone system, POTS, but now we'll be plugging it into the network. For a lot of you that don't realize, network is most important. You've been studying with Mr. Florimon about network. I can't tell you how important network is. The more you know about network, the more you know about IT. The less you know about network, the less, the less you understand about information technology. Everything is network. Uh, we spent, um, Last week we spent training in security, network security, and everything that we studied concerning wireless and security is based on understanding the network. Okay. We're also going to learn how to use power over Ethernet. One of the things that we're doing is we're replacing switches. Uh, in the past, if I was to connect a PC to a switch, it provided me only network data, only network data. 
we are now moving to power over Ethernet. We're moving to power over Ethernet, which is going to provide both network data as well as electrical power. For example, USB. My USB plug, my USB connection provides power to the mouse as well as data. Um, Firewire provides almost an amp of five, wa five volts at one amp of power as well as network data. So network gear is now doing the same. We can spot network resources. Uh, we can also uh, test cables and, and uh, we can test cable runs. So this equipment is going to provide us lots of cool stuff. So let's get started. How do you begin? You take the piece of equipment and hopefully you've all slowly passed it around. First thing I'm going to do with the, the network tool is I'm going to plug it into the network. Okay? Plug it into the network. Once it's on, once it's plugged in, uh, then I'm going to power it up. So I'm always going to plug it into the network, power it up, and it automatically begins to look at the network and to start discovering. Now, there are two ways you can plug this device in. You can plug it uh, by itself or you can plug it in line. You can plug it between a switch and a PC. You can plug it between a PC and an IP phone. You can plug it in between a wireless access point. Okay, so you plug it in, hook it up, fire it on. The network always goes into what jack? The what jack? Left or right? All right, watch out for that one. Now you also have a mini USB that allows you to take a CD, connect it, uh, load the software onto your desktop, and you can actually plug the, the tool up to your desktop, upload reports, download data, so you can move data back and forth between the tool and your desktop if you need to. Navigation buttons, this allows you to maneuver the highlighted and keep in mind when you're navigating, what you're doing is you're moving this highlighted up and down and around. So that's, that's what you're navigating. Let's go, hit your clicker. Wow, Mr. Florimon. I'm impressed. Okay, once powered on, the display. Once you fire this unit up, the display comes up and looks like this. So when you grab it, plug it in, hit the power button, it pops up on the display and looks like this. Once you hit the select button and you could say go ahead and do it, the device begins to listen to the network and displays information on the screen. So that's what you're going to do. Plug it in, hit the power button, go ahead and auto select the test and uh, get started. So let's talk a, lot, a little bit about the LEDs. Notice that we have two LEDs on the same side, so they're, they're both the same thing. On the top is the link state. If it's white, if the LED is white, it's one gig. If it's blue, it's 100 megabits. If it's green, it's 10 megabits. Now keep in mind, when I plug a network cable into this, it and the LED light comes on, it tells me that there is an electrical and logical connection between the NIC and a switch port. A link light does not guarantee connection. If I plug this in to say this, this connection in here and it shows a link light, 100 megabits, that is good, That's we want to see that but it is not a guarantee of a good connection. I have seen many times when I have a link light and the connection is still faulty. So it's good, we want it there, but it is not a guarantee. All right, next round, round of LEDs moving downward are the collision error LEDs. We have two colors, yellow is collision, red is error. Now, I will tell you this, Ethernet networks are rarely do you see either collisions or errors. So it would be a rare, rare thing to see either one of these LEDs come up and light up. But if they do, here are your problems. 
One is called a giant. In other words, an Ethernet packet that is way too big. It's illegal. That will generate a red. A runt. A runt is an Ethernet packet that's way too small. It, again, is illegal. And again, it will generate a red error. The other thing that will generate a red, a red LED is network pulses that are not recognizable. In other words, there's voltage on the wire. The network card cannot recognize it. The switch cannot recognize it. That will generate a red. On a rare occasion, you'll see a collision, not very often. But you will not see these lights come on very often, OK? Questions? Let's go. What do we got? 100%? 11% hit B. Mr. Florimon. I, I knew, you know, you put boys with clickers in here, you're going to get all kinds of stuff. It's a rough day for some of them. All right. Now, the last set of LEDs is utilization. Utilization can be three colors. Three colors. So we can have green, yellow, or red. These are called tricolor LEDs. Utilization is the measurement of capacity. How much network capacity do you have? Ethernet, it's very important to understand this. Ethernet basically is at saturation at 45 to 55%. So if, will I ever see a red? Probably not. But if you see yellow, you are wiped. If that yellow LED comes on in utilization, trust me, nothing's coming in and nothing's coming out because you're already saturated. So we do have green, we do have yellow, we do have red. But understanding that Ethernet is basically at saturation at between 45 and 55%, means that if you see a yellow, you're there, okay? For all practical purposes, you're already saturated. Let's go. Let's see what you know. Oh, Mr. Foreman, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing brains begin to churn. Oh, yeah. Are we done? All right, I'll give you a few more seconds. They had to think that time. All right, let's go. Let's see what we did. Ouch. Take a look at the question again carefully. Everybody understand now? Okay. All right, last, last new button. This is a brand new button. This is very new for us because right now on this campus, we don't have any type of power over Ethernet. We have no power over Ethernet. But we're going to find that as we move down the future, power over Ethernet is coming and here to stay. In the future, you will not buy a switch, even at CompUSA or, or any place. Are you going to buy any kind of switches? And most of you buy the little five port switches so you can hook up five computers. You're not going to buy anything in the future that will not be power over Ethernet. Why? Because it's going to, pro it's going to provide a lot of nice features. First of all, it's becoming the standard. Okay. Second of all, this is the standard, 802.3.af. That is the standard. Now, the bad news. We have a standard. The bad news. Nobody follows it. <laughs> Nobody does it. So we do have a standard for power over Ethernet. And the standard says between 48 and 50 volts on pairs 1 and 2, 3 and 6, and uh, it's going to provide X amount of current. So that standard is in place. Cisco doesn't do it. Linksys doesn't do it. I don't know of anybody that does it exactly the way the standard is, but we have a standard for whatever, whatever good that does for us.
power over Ethernet is now here to stay. So with this tool, we're going to actually be going to be able to plug into a network jack and identify voltages, even current. And this will be very important as we move down the road. We don't need it so much today, but when that $98,000 is spent, everything in our school will be power over Ethernet. Everything. So, we can provide up to 48 volts on two of four pairs. Remember, an Ethernet cable has eight wires in it, which represents four pairs. We're going to use two of those pairs to provide DC. We can supply up to 400 milliamps of power to a device, such as an access point, if I want to put a wireless access point in the middle of the room. With power over Ethernet switches, I don't have to hire an electrician, uh, provide conduit up the wall, through the ceiling. I can just plug him into the network, run a network cable in the ceiling, fasten it to a device on the ceiling, walk away. It's got electrical power as well as network data. So things like IP cameras, if I want to put a camera on the top of the building, all I have to do is run power over Ethernet. So does that mean that it's going to be a power light too? Like I don't know, because it's limited. I mean, it's only 400 milliamps, so it's going to be just enough supplied power to run an access point, a camera, limited power. I mean, it's not going to... It's, you know, it doesn't have a lot of power, but it's enough to run a device, small devices, okay? How do we hook this device up? Well, here's a common way. This is in line. In other words, this is one way you can hook up the tool. Notice, very interesting, this logical connection. I've got my, I've got my tool between the jack and the IP phone, which is going to become more and more common. And look where the computer is connected to. The computer is connected to what? The phone. If you have, if you go to, you go to work for a company that has uh, IP phones, the computer is not hooked up to the wall. The computer is hooked up to the phone. The phone connects all the devices to the wall outlet. Huh? Does it get some power to it no, it doesn't. They're actually logically s splitting the signal, but um, that's how we're physically connecting things now. Okay, just understand that's how we're physically connecting. Um, let's learn a few terms, and, we'll, and I'll be right with your question. A couple new terms that you need to start putting in your memory because these are going to be important as we move down the road. We're learning some new terms. One is called PD. That's a power device, like a phone. It needs power from the network. The power sourcing equipment, PSEs, that's going to be your Cisco switch or your Link Sys that you're going to buy from CompUSA. In other words, it's going to be a power sourcing device. So these are new terms that we need to start adding to our repertoire of, of uh, things to learn because we're going to need to know them as we move in the future. Yes, sir? So that means that, um, that they're already telling the, the IP special phone, like the, so it'll have voice over IP? Yes, Is yes. Is like an adapter so you can use your old phone or no? You uh, you're you're going to either have your old phones or new phones. A lot of companies will have hybrids for a while, but um, you're going to see it's, it's happening now big time. All new construction, all new installations are all going IP phones. No. Let's say, for example, or this school, which would have a lot of infrastructure for old technology. So we would probably, for years, have both. But there's going to come a day when we're going to cut the cord and all the old phone. We may have a jack, but we're not using it. But is there an adapter where they can work together? No, not yet. You're going to have to have both technologies for a while. Power over Ethernet, that's the display. I'll let you look at it just very briefly. Who uses P over E? Those are the big ones right now. We'll probably see lots more very uh, 
Lots of cool things as we move down the, down the road, but right now these are the big PoE devices. Here's some cool things from uh, D-Link. If you have old switches and need, uh, and you, you're going to be buying some PD devices, an, an access point or IP phone, you can buy power injectors so that you can mix old technology with new technology. So if you don't have the newest switches, power over Ethernet, but you need to see, you still can, okay? You do need to remember on the tool, you do need to check if you're going to have a campus with power over Ethernet, you do have to go in the settings of the tool and enable this, otherwise it ignores power over Ethernet. So just be sure that you uh, check. Hello. Uh, are we in the Frederick Woody West money? Who? Frederick. Yeah. Does that mean like, is it going to be free like uh, usage on your phone then? There's not going to be like no need for like Bell South and Sprint and Unbark and stuff like that? That's a very good question. No, I don't see that. Uh, I don't see the, the old telephone system dying today, but it is being supplanted by the idea of using IP phones. Are you still, are you going to be able to get this for free? No, the only way you're going to get IP phone for free is use Skype or something like that. But even Skype charges you once you leave the Skype network and you touch uh, the old phone system. So right now, uh, let's say it's competitive, um, but no, nothing's going to go away right away, but it is going to transform and change. All right, let's use clickers. You guys all done? Mm. Are we ready? Anybody need any more time? Ouch. I'm going to split these boys in half. All right, let's see which one is right. Ah. Uh, All right, NetTool display. This is going to be the display that we're going to see, and we're, go we're going to have to learn what is it showing us. Okay, when I plug it in and I see this come up on the screen,